In this lesson, the brake modulating and automatic braking systems, as fitted to most modern airliners, will be described. Brake modulating systems are normally referred to as anti-skid systems. Optimum braking is important in the operation of modern aircraft with their high landing speeds, low drag and high weight, particularly when coupled with operation from and into short runways in bad weather. The pilot is unable to sense when the wheels lock, and so the primary requirement of a brake modulating system is to provide skid prevention. Whenever braking torque is developed, there must only be a small degree of slip between the wheel and the ground. A skidding wheel provides very little braking effect. In all brake modulating systems, the deceleration of the individual wheels is taken as the controlling parameter of braking torque. A datum figure for wheel deceleration is selected, which is known to be greater than the maximum possible deceleration rate of the aircraft. When this datum figure is exceeded, brake pressure is automatically reduced or released. Systems may be mechanical or electrical. Mechanical systems have been in use since the early 1950s. Most aircraft today use electrical or electronic systems. Anti-skid systems have a huge effect on the distance required to bring an aircraft to a stop from high speed. The required stopping distance increases considerably if the anti-skid system is unserviceable. An electronic anti-skid system comprises three main elements. A sensor which measures wheel speed, a control box, known as an anti-skid unit, or ASU, to compute wheel speed information, and a servo valve, or anti-skid valve, to modulate brake pressure. The anti-skid unit provides three important functions. These are touchdown protection, skid prevention, and locked wheel protection. Touchdown protection prevents the brakes being applied before touchdown. The electronic anti-skid unit will monitor the wheel speed and air ground logic. If no signal is received, the brakes cannot be applied while the aircraft is airborne. On touchdown, the wheels spin up and apply a signal to the control unit, which will now allow the brakes to be applied. This does not, however, imply that you should attempt a landing with the brake pedals depressed. It is a safety backup system only. For skid prevention, the anti-skid control unit will reduce the brake pressure to any wheel that it determines is approaching a skid by monitoring the deceleration rate of the individual wheels. It will then modulate the pressure to ensure optimum braking. Most electronic anti-skid units have an adaptive pressure bias modulation circuit. This ensures that with the pilot applying a constant pressure on the pedals, the brake pressure applied immediately after a wheel is released following a skid is lower than the pressure which caused the skid. This prevents an immediate return to the skid conditions that cause the anti-skid unit to release the pressure in the first place. If a wheel locks because of a wet patch or ice, for instance, the anti-skid controller will release the brake pressure to that wheel completely until the wheel spins up again. Then the pressure will be reapplied. This feature is usually disabled at low speed. A brake torque sensor is provided at each wheel to detect excessive torque during braking to prevent damage to the landing gear strut or strut mountings. This is more of a problem with carbon brakes. When excessive torque stress is detected, a signal is sent to the anti-skid valve and brake pressure to that wheel is reduced. To enable the pilot to have full control of the brakes for taxiing and manoeuvring, on some aircraft types, the anti-skid system is automatically deactivated when the aircraft has slowed down to below approximately 10 knots, when it is assumed that there is no further danger of skidding.
to summarize the electronic anti-skid system. Here is a demonstration of how it will operate during approach and landing. On approach, with the gear selected down and anti-skid switched on, the touchdown protection system will not allow the brakes to be applied. On touchdown, once the ASU receives an on-ground signal and the main wheels have spun up to about 80 knots, touchdown protection is disabled and braking can commence. The anti-skid system will now modulate the brakes to produce optimum braking. Should any wheel lock for any reason, then the locked wheel protection system will completely release the pressure to the locked wheel until it spins up again. As the aircraft slows through about 20 knots, the locked wheel protection system is disabled. Finally, on some systems, as the aircraft slows through about 10 knots, the entire anti-skid system is disabled, and braking is completely in the hands, or more correctly, the feet, of the pilot. Most modern aircraft have an automatic braking system which can be selected to operate during landing rollout or during a rejected takeoff. The auto brake system is usually only usable when the brakes are being supplied from their normal hydraulic source. It is not normally available when using the alternate brake system. The main advantages of such a system are that it will react more quickly than the pilot and will also constantly apply the correct amount of braking to provide the required rate of deceleration. Depending on the aircraft type, a number of landing deceleration rates may be selected. The Boeing system shown here uses a rotary selector switch to control the level of braking required. The rejected takeoff or RTO selection provides maximum braking. On an Airbus, push buttons are used with MAX being selected on takeoff to give rejected takeoff protection. The decel lights illuminate during the landing roll to indicate that the selected level of deceleration is being achieved. Anti skid protection is provided during auto brake operation. If the anti skid system is unserviceable, then the auto brake system is disabled. On systems with a rotary selector, the landing auto brake system is armed by selecting one of the deceleration rates on the auto brake selector. The system is now armed, provided the anti skid system is serviceable and the normal brake system is being used. If these parameters are not met, then the auto brake disarm light will illuminate. On touchdown, with ground mode and wheel spin up sensed, the brakes will be automatically applied and will slow the aircraft at the selected rate of deceleration to a complete stop or until the auto brakes are disarmed. The deceleration rate may be changed during auto brake operation without disarming by rotating the selector. With RTO selected, maximum brake pressure modulated by the anti-skid unit will be applied automatically when all thrust levers are closed at ground speeds above a specific speed depending on aircraft type, normally around 85 knots. This brings the aircraft to a stop in the shortest possible distance. If a rejected takeoff is initiated below this specific speed, the auto brake system will not be activated and manual braking will be required. The pilot can disarm the auto brake at any time and revert to manual braking simply by applying pressure to the brake pedals. As we have already seen, the auto brake system disarms immediately and the disarm light will illuminate if an auto brake or normal anti-skid system fault occurs or if manual braking is applied. During auto brake operation, disarming will also occur if after landing any thrust lever is advanced or after landing if the speed brake lever is returned to the down detent after the speed brakes have been deployed. This is because advancing the thrust levers or retracting the speed brakes is an indication of a rejected landing. The auto brakes can also be disarmed by moving the auto brake selector to disarm or to off. 
In this case, the disarm light will not illuminate. However, the auto brake system is normally disarmed by the handling pilot tapping the brake pedals when he is happy that the speed of the aircraft is under control. That is the end of the lesson on anti-skid and auto brake systems. Remember that a modern anti-skid system, as well as producing optimum deceleration, also has the additional features of touchdown protection, preventing the brakes being applied before landing, and locked wheel protection, releasing the pressure to any wheel that locks because of hitting a very slippery patch on the runway. The auto brake system, if armed before landing, will automatically apply the brakes after touchdown and decelerate the aircraft at a predetermined rate. If the rejected takeoff mode is armed, in the event of a rejected takeoff, it will stop the aircraft in the shortest possible distance.